in this video, I'm going to be talking about arithmetic sequences, series, arithmetic series, uh, sigma summation notation, and, you know, kind of some situations that go along with this type of stuff. Okay, but before we start talking about an arithmetic sequence, we need to talk about a sequences in the first place. Sequence is an ordered list of numbers. And really what it is, okay, we're used to studying functions, that, you know, take in a real number and give you back a real number, y equals f of x. And what this is going to be is a sequence is oftentimes going to be a function, but that only takes in natural numbers, you know, like 1, 2, 3. So, and so we have a first term, a second term, a third term, and so on. Okay. And then an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that has terms that have some sort of common difference, okay, where every time, you know, say, from one to the next, you increase by six or decrease by 11, something like that, okay? Uh, you already know a bunch of arithmetic sequences. You know, if you can count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's an arithmetic sequence because you're increasing by 10 each time. Uh, if you can count by threes, any of these things. Um, if you start at two and add three each time, so two, five, eight, 11, 14, this is an arithmetic sequence also. Okay, so for example, I've got two sequences below. Okay? Any sort of like list of numbers that just keeps going on with discernible pattern or not is going to be a sequence. But not all sequences are arithmetic sequences. So what we need to do is we need to kind of do a little bit of investigation on this. Okay, so determining if, you know, something is an arithmetic sequence or not, what you're going to do is examine the common difference. So when I go from 1 to 5, I've added 4. And when I go from 5 to 9, I've added 4. Added 4. Oops. Okay, I've still made an error. Okay, there needs to be a 17 in there. Oh, yeah. yeah there was a 17 on my notes. Let us say it. The last one we see is 17. Whoops. Plus 4. Yes, this thing is an arithmetic sequence. Right. And B, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, going from 12 to 7 is decreasing by 5. 7 to 2, also decreasing by 5. 2 to negative 8 is decreasing by 10. Wait a second. That's a different difference. You need to have the same difference between each two terms. So as soon as you see something different, you can confidently say, well, I don't know what this is, but I know this is not an arithmetic sequence. Now that we're able to determine what is and isn't an arithmetic sequence, we're going to need to be able to write down a general rule to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Okay. And we'll call that an explicit formula. Okay. So that's like f of x equals, you know, whatever kind of function we've got. That's an explicit formula for f of x. Okay, now we're going to be doing the same thing, except instead of f of x, we're going to call it a n. Okay. So I'll just say that a an explicit formula for the terms of an arithmetic sequence, which is a rule that can help us find specific terms, we're going to be able to write this down using pretty much the two identifying characteristics of an arithmetic sequence. Okay? The biggest characteristic of the arithmetic sequence is what makes it an arithmetic sequence, that common difference. Okay, so I'll just kind of write down, I'll call this common difference D. Or the constant difference. And then the other thing that's important is where we start. Okay, so we need that first term as well. Okay, so I'll call that first term A1. Okay, 1 being kind of the index. Okay, so it starts at 1. So A10 would be the 10th term and so on. An is the nth term. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you the formula right here uh, that the the general formula, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just highlight this. Is that 
the nth term is equal to the first term plus the difference multiplied by n minus 1. Okay? Because to get up to the second term, you only need to add the difference once, right? You don't need to add the difference twice to the first term to get the second term. You don't need to add it once. So, I like this. Okay, and that's something that we either need to know or need to be able to be pretty good at reverse engineering a rule for a list. But we'll get plenty of practice with that. And just going back as, as an example, I'll go back to that sequence A. Okay. So A is given by, it was 1, 5, 9, 13, and so on. All right. Well, the first term is right there. It's 1. So A1 equals 1. The common difference is what I keep adding each time. That's plus 4 each time. So that common difference is equal to 4. And I can write an explicit formula for the nth term by starting with the first term and adding 4 times n minus 1. Let's, let's kind of just check some of the things that we know. Is the, I mean, is the third term going to equal 9? A3 equals 1 plus 4 times, okay, so you see how this n is what we plug into the function. It's like the x in f of x. Okay, so 4 times 3 minus 1, so that's 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9, which is what I was seeing over here. The third term is 9. Now, the thing is, is that, you know, that minus 1 is always kind of the thing. It's like, well, what's up with the minus 1? Okay. I only needed to add the difference twice to get from the first term to the third term. Okay. That's how that works. All right. Now would be a good time for us to start practicing on our own. Okay. So it's going to ask us to find an explicit formula for the nth term and then find the 50th term. Okay. That's something that we can do. All right. So we're just going to need to start with a some sort of sequence, hopefully an arithmetic sequence. All right, so we've got two of them here. And I think I'm going to actually do the one on the right. Um, so that one's got a negative common difference, which is something a little different. Okay, so you kind of write down all the ingredients for the general term. Okay, then that would be starting with the first term. First term is equal to 29. Common difference is negative 9, right? Go from 29 to 20 by decreasing 9. 20 to 11 by decreasing 9, 11 to 2 by decreasing 9. So that means that the nth term is equal to the first term plus the difference times n minus 1. And if I want the 50th term, I just plug in 50 for n. And that might be something that we would need to use the calculator for. But if we do 29 minus 9 times 49, that would be negative 412. Why don't you try G on your own? And if you're watching at home, you can just quietly follow along with me. But for those of you all in class, I'm going to freeze the screen and you can check your work again. Huh? And G is the one, it's, it's actually on the bottom of the previous page, the bottom left, and you need to change the negative one to be positive one. Yeah, there's a negative one there that wants to be a positive one. You see on your, on your booklet it says negative one.
I'll go. So I started the first term is negative 6. The common difference is 7. So that means that the nth term of g is negative 6 plus 7 times n minus 1. And when I plug in 50, okay, it looks like in retrospect I might have been a little better to ask you for the 51st term. It might have made the arithmetic a little easier. Uh, that's something I'll remember for the quiz and the test. Um, you just plugged in 50 for n. I grabbed a calculator, and I got 337. Okay, next we're going to talk about series. And series are related to sequences, and they're formed by adding the terms of a sequence together. Okay, so whereas earlier, you know, that kind of first sequence that we had that I called A, okay, so I said A N was the set 1, 5, 9, 13, and so on. Okay, a series can be formed by adding together the terms of A. So like 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13. Some sort of like accumulation of the terms of A. And we can use kind of a shorthand to represent this addition. And if you were allowed a graphing calculator, you could just jam it in there and find all sorts of series. But we're not allowing that. Because you aren't allowed one on the clip. Okay, so you just have to be able to be fluent with this notation, is what we're asking you. Okay, so the this is the large sum notation. So it's uh, it's a sigma, like capital Greek letter sigma. And we're going to, and it means sum. So I'll just kind of. So that means we're going to add a bunch of things together. We're, the things that we're adding together, it's like this is kind of the thing that goes inside the sigma, right? So we're going to add together the terms of a n as n starts at 1 and goes up to, well, I added 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13, so I went up to four terms. Okay, so this is the sum of the terms of a n. That's starting at one and going up to four. And that's basically what that all means. Now, in reality, a four term sum is something you're going to be much more likely to just either do mentally or using a calculator. But eventually, for really large sums, we're going to need to use a special formula. Okay. So if I wanted to add together, you know, say the first you know, 10 terms of Bn, okay, well, what I would want to do is, okay, maybe I wanted an explicit formula for Bn first. Okay. That would be 12. And the common difference is negative 5 times n minus 1. Okay, so we could write this if we wanted to add together the first 10 terms of bn. This is where n equals 1 and running up to 10 of 12 minus 5 times n minus 1. Okay, you can also write the actual formula in for the sum ands. That's what you would call the things that you're adding together. And I think that this is one where it's large enough that it would be pretty unpleasant to write out all 10 and then add them together on the calculator. And it would actually be faster to use the general formula. All right, now I'm going to come back to that thing that I was talking about just before. But for now, we need to be able to, you know, like I said, we need to be fluent with this sigma notation. And now that I'm looking at it, I need to, I'm going to, I was trying to make a point here. Um, Okay, so I've got three things. It's just like write out the terms of the sum. Well, i equals 1 to 5. This is not i like the square root of negative 1. This is just 
I is the index that's standing in for these numbers that are going to run from 1 up to 5, but only be whole numbers. So I'm going to plug in 1, so 3 minus 2 is 1. Then we're going to go I equals 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. I equals 3. It's 9 minus 2 is 7. I equals 4 would be 12 minus 2 is 10. And I equals 5 would be 13. All right. And those are the terms of the series. Over here, 2K plus 3, starting at 2. It should really have to be mindful of that starting value. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Plus, okay, plug in K equals 3, that's 6 and 3 is 9. Plug in K equals 4, and that's 11. And on this last one, I've got 1 over n plus 1. Okay, starting at n equals 0, that would be 1 over 1, plus when n equals 1, that's 1 over 2, and n equals 2 would be 1 over 3. Okay, so 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth and so on is the type of series that you would study, you know, in a calculus course. And, you know, we'd have a lot of things to say about that series. For now, what I'll say is that this is not an arithmetic series, right? It's not an arithmetic series because the difference in the terms is not constant. The difference between one and a half is a half, but the difference between half and a third is a sixth. That's not the same difference. So it's not an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic series. Okay, the other thing I was going to point out is that for an arithmetic series, the summands will always be linear. You'll always see a linear formula in right there where we're listing out what we're going to add together. Okay, and that, that could be useful to you. All right. And then the last thing I got for you today is the formula for large sums. Okay. And I guess technically this isn't absolutely necessary. You could, you know, really grind through this and, and eventually come to the answer. But kind of the driving question here is, what's the sum of the first 100 whole numbers? So if we add 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, all the way up to 98, 99, and 100, what are we going to get? Okay, that would take a while if you were going to just type that into the calculator. You could certainly do it, though. What I'll say is uh, kind of where this comes from is a lot of times people credit uh, Carl Frederick Gauss for this, but I'm certain that they had discovered this technique in other parts of the world before he was a child. But, you know, that kind of the legend is that he was a, an unruly child. He was like some sort of child genius that was really bored by his arithmetic class, and the teacher was... You know, I wanted to just be quiet in the back. So we told him to add up the first 100 numbers, and it took him, like, you know, 10 seconds, and then, you know, he was back to being unruly. So I'm not even sure if that's true or not. But what he did was that he had noticed that, okay, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all of the numbers that add, okay, until 98, 99, and 100. And you can, if you look, you'll see that, like, 3 plus 98 is 101. 2 plus 99, also 101. 1 plus 100, also 101. And they're in pairs. So that would mean that there's 50 pairs of 101. So this is equal to 50 times 101 which is going to be 5,050. Now, how can we generalize this to other sums that aren't you know, so easy to look at? And that's where I will come in with the general formula. And now I got myself some more room over here. And I will write the formula for large arithmetic sums. So the arithmetic sum formula. is okay, what you do is you take the first term and you add it to the last term right uh, you add them together and then you multiply by half as many as there are numbers because the number of pairs of that right and i'll tell you you know it's something for y'all to work out or us to work out in the practice problems next time 
But this is the type of thing that it works, even if there, you might say, well, what if there's an odd number of terms? That doesn't make sense, man. And it's going to end up being not a whole number, but you're adding together only integers. And it does work. It's just the details of that I will leave until next time. That's all I got for y'all today. Uh, we'll practice.